So my name is Karen Ball, and one of the things that I teach here at FSM is foot and hand reflexology. And I want to take a few minutes to just tell you a little bit about it. Um, it's a very, very old therapy. It comes out of the East, and uh, we're not really sure exactly where it first came to be. The earliest records of it are actually in Egypt, but it was developed in China, and it's based on two primary theories. And the first theory is that there are reflexes in the hands and in the feet that reflect almost every part of your body. And that by certain uh, techniques with your hands, you can actually have a positive influence on those reflexes. So um, one of the other theories around it is that the body gets divided into actually 10 zones. So if I was to hold up my hand, this would be the first zone, this would be the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth. And then it's the same with the foot. So your great toe is your first zone, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So here's an example of a reflexology chart. And it's a chart that we use here at the school to teach from. I want to give you a little visual on how the zones would work in the body. So here's your great toe. This would be your first zone. Your second zone would be from the second toe, the third, the fourth, and then the baby toe is your fifth zone. Okay. So that's the bottom of the foot, what we call the plantar surface of the foot. Now the other lines that we look at are the divisional lines that come across the body. So in my body, here's my shoulder line, my head, right? so the reflexes to my head are all going to be found here in the toes. Here would be my shoulder line coming across. My diaphragm line, shoulder line, the whole chest area. On the foot, shoulder line, diaphragm line, and then what people call the balls of their foot, the heads of the metatarsals, that's the whole chest area where I find the reflexes to my heart and to my lungs. Um, diaphragm line, and then here's my pelvic line. So in between here, of course, is my abdominal area with all the reflexes to my stomach and my liver, all the digestive organs. On the foot, I'm going to find that in the arch of the foot. So it'll be between that diaphragm line and where the heel is, so right in this arch area. And then the heel area actually refers to the pelvic area of my body. So you can almost see like your whole body superimposed over the foot and see your head, chest, abdomen, and then your pelvic area. Where I'm going to focus when I'm working with on Pluto would be in this area. Okay. Yeah. One of the areas we like to focus on with the students in the program is the chest area because this is where your heart and lung reflexes are and you know they're their primary reflexes okay <laughs> all right so when we come to the foot i'm going to just show you the zones on the foot as well okay so here's the great toe i can just draw a line right in between the great toe and the next toe and come down come between the second and the third come all the way down between the third and the fourth and between the fourth and the fifth. Okay, so this would be zone one, all the way in this area, zone two in this area, three, four, and five. And those zones will extend all the way up the body. So whatever lives in the first zone, in the Look foot, in the reflex of the foot, is gonna to relate to whatever is in that zone coming up the body. Now the horizontal ones, it's my shoulder line, the diaphragm line, it's the waistline, and then the pelvic line. So my head reflexes, all the reflexes for my head and the neck area will be uh, where the toes are. The chest area will be between the shoulder line and the diaphragm line where the balls of the foot are, the heads of the metatarsals. And then this whole arch area is going to relate to the abdominal area. So the upper area where your stomach is, 
down in here where your intestines are. And then the pelvic area will be here, this whole heel area. Okay, and that will relate to all the organs of the reproductive system. So now I'm going to show you the primary techniques in reflexology is offering an alternating pressure. So if I take my thumb, there's two bones in my thumb and I just bend right there. It's kind of like, this will be called the reflexology wave too, by the way. And um, I'm going to apply alternating pressure using this thumb. Okay. So I'm going to apply just a little bit of lubrication on her foot first. And I'm going to start by doing a few techniques just to relax her foot a little bit and warm up the tissue. provide a, f a, a few purposes, you know, the relaxing the tissue, warming up the tissue, getting the blood circulating. Also though, it's I'm introducing myself kind of kinesthetically to the client. Generally in a session we would spend maybe hmm, five, six, seven minutes to work on the foot doing a number of these relaxation techniques. I'm spreading the whole top of the foot, the dorsal part of the foot, and now I'm spreading the plantar surface, the bottom of the foot. So I'm going to start in the first zone. I'm going to start down at the heel. I'm going to lay my thumb just flat on the heel and then I'm just going to rock in. Straighten my thumb, move a little bit forward and rock in. So some people think of this as like, uh, like inching, like a little inchworm moving forward. So each one of these little steps that I'm taking what I'm doing is paying attention to the tissue, just noticing what I feel. I start off, I get a sense of how homogenous it is, how, how much it is alike, and then what can happen is that I can come across an area where all of a sudden it gets my attention because it feels really different. Or the client themselves might say something to me. There's some sensation where your thumb is. Mm -hmm. Right down in here. Mm -hmm. In a session, I would work vertically through each of these zones, thumb walking all the way up. And then what I'll do is come in and get a little even more specific by coming across horizontally through them and then check for any places that get my attention or get my client's attention. I have some sensation there. You do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I felt something a little bit different in this area and so did my client. So what I'm going to do now is just stop and I'm just going to hold this point and if you would just take a few deep breaths. Take about three of them. Nice big breaths. And while you're breathing just pay attention to what this what feels like under my thumb. How does that feel now? Feels like it's eased up a little bit. Feels like it's eased up. Okay. All right. So, as soon as my client feels a change in the sensation like that, I'm going to just kind of come out of that point. I might just do something to smooth the area out. And then I'm going to just continue on with walking. And you'll notice that my thumb walks are really slow, very rhythmical. I want her to be able to really, really relax with this. And for her to be able to bring her attention to her body so she'll notice anything going on. Now come down a little bit lower.
So now I'm feeling something. I haven't heard anything from my client, but I'm going to just inquire and see if she notices anything here. So are you, when you bring your attention to this point, do you notice anything different than the other points we've been on? It has a little bit of sensation to it. A little bit more sensation? A little bit okay. more sensation. Okay. So let's take a few deep breaths again. Does pressure feel comfortable? It feels perfect. Okay. And when you exhale, just let your body totally relax on the table. I can apply a little bit of movement if I want in it, really slow, small friction. I want to keep the pressure comfortable for her. And at the same time, I want her to feel it though. So what do you notice now? The sensation has decreased. Decreased a little bit, mm -hmm. okay. We can go to the top of the foot now too. Because this part of the foot doesn't have as much tissue on it as the plantar surface, I'm not going to use my thumbs, my heavy hitters. I'm going to use my fingers here. You can use one or two or even three of them, but let's say I start with two. Support the great toe with one hand. And it's the same action really, only it's a finger walk this time. Just bending in. You notice I have short nails, so my nails aren't coming into her. I don't want to bend so much for her that she actually feels those nails either. The movement is comfortable for my hands. I don't bother with trying to apply so much pressure that I hurt my hands or cause uh, pain to my client. the first zone and now I'm going to come into the second zone so this place right here under my middle finger got my attention and I just check in to see if you notice anything in this area feels a bit sensitive. A little sensitive? Okay. Yeah. Is this pressure comfortable for you? Pressure is perfect. Okay. All right, so let's just take a few deep breaths. I'm going to move my finger back and forth a little bit and really small friction movements. taking the opportunity to focus on my own breath at the same time so that I'm breathing as well. Once my hands are in motion, I can bring my own eyes up to just watch my client's breathing. Trust that my hands know what they're doing. What are you aware of now? I'm here. Um, I'm aware that the sensation has decreased a little bit. Okay. And just smooth it out. This is a technique that we use a lot to work on the groin lymph reflexes.
in addition to working on the reflexes of the groin limp, this is a really great technique to loosen up um, a band of connective tissue here that is kind of supports all the ligaments and veins and nerves that are coming into the dorsal part of the foot. Do some range of motion with the feet as well. People generally come for reflexology for one of about three reasons. Either their feet hurt or their hands hurt, or they feel really stressed. Because this modality will actually shift your nervous system into a really deeply relaxed state and then your body can heal itself. Where the other reason people come for reflexology is because there's some sort of an imbalance going on in one of their internal systems. They might be experiencing um, pain, they might be having trouble with their digestion, they might be having a lot of sinus issues or any respiratory issue going on. So we can have an effect on the health of those systems by working the reflexes into them. of all the reflexes to the spine. And the primary system that reflexology is working on is the nervous system. So this is always a really important area to pay attention to. Again, you can see I'm switching my hands back and forth, switching between my fingers and my thumbs. That way I don't ever get repetitive strain injuries with my own hands. One thing I like to do when I've finished working on one foot or one hand is to check in with my client before I move on to the other one and just see if they can notice a difference. You know, I can always notice a difference in the tissue myself, but it's more important that they're noticing. You want to bring your attention to both your feet. Wiggle them around. Mm -hmm. And can you feel a difference between them as you're doing that? I can. Uh -huh. Can you describe that difference? The one that you worked on feels much lighter, uh -huh. um, more flexible. Um, um, feels like there's less crunchies. Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. If you're curious about massage therapy as a career for yourself and are interested in knowing a little bit more about what we offer at the Florida School of Massage, I'm inviting you to give us a call. Come by, take a tour, hang out with our students. They'll tell you what the school is like. And if you're interested in knowing more about reflexology, you can leave a message for me at the school and I'd be happy to call you back.